हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर आवर फोर्थ लेक्चर ऑन लॉज ऑफ थर्मोडायनामिक्स ऑफ सिस्टम्स इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग कोर्स नाउ लेट अस रिवाइज इन लास्ट लेक्चर व्हाट वी हैव स्टडीड वी हैव स्टार्टेड लास्ट लेक्चर विद इफ आई हैव टू स्टडी एनी थर्मोडायनामिक सिस्टम देन व्हिच अप्रोच आई नीड टू गो फॉर there we have studied microscopic approach as well as macroscopic approach in order to understand the difference between microscopic approach and macroscopic approach we have taken the example of class you might be remembering then we have started with state of a system followed by thermodynamic properties that may be temperature that may be pressure that may be mass density or many more are there followed by which are the intensive properties what are the extensive properties what is a state or point function as well as what is path function and the quantities which are possessing either state or path function followed by energy and different forms of energy under different forms of energy we have covered potential energy kinetic energy then internal energy and lastly we have covered enthalpy now as per as laws of thermodynamics are concerned basically four laws are there which are zeroth law of thermodynamics first law of thermodynamics second law of thermodynamics and finally third law of thermodynamics now let us first study the zeroth law of thermodynamics this law is related to thermodynamic equilibrium and you might have seen the thermometer or the device with the help of which we are measuring the temperature of different parts that device working principle is nothing but what zeroth law of thermodynamics now what is the statement of zeroth law of thermodynamics let us consider three bodies which are body a body b and body c now let us assume that body a is in thermal equilibrium with body b individually as well as body a is in thermal equilibrium with body c individually then what we can say according to zeroth law of thermodynamics body b and body c are also in thermodynamic equilibrium with each other in order to understand the zeroth law of thermodynamics or the working principle of thermometer let us take an example let us consider two beakers and give those names as body b and body c and to thermometer give name as a body a in order to measure the temperature of a fluid inside body b what i need to do i need to put the thermometer in body b and after some time it will show the temperature now i can say that body a is in thermal equilibrium with body b similarly in order to measure the temperature of fluid inside body c what i need to do once again i need to put the thermometer inside that body c after some after some time it will also show the temperature of a fluid inside body c now concluding remark what i can say as body a is in thermal equilibrium with body b individually and body a is in also thermal equilibrium with body c individually then i can say that the temperature of body b and temperature of body c both are equal now let us start with first law of thermal now it is nothing but it is also called as law of conservation of energy and what is the statement of law of conservation of energy energy can neither be created nor be destroyed only it can be transferred from one form to another form still the total energy of universe remains constant now in order to understand this law of conservation of energy let us take an example of water cooler you might have seen that water cooler the energy which is possessed by a water which is stored inside the water cooler that is nothing but potential energy now let us say that we have opened the tap now what will happen the water which is stored inside the water cooler it will start flowing and the water which is coming out from the cooler as a result of opening of that tap let us assume that that water is striking on some blades of a turbine as a result of striking action what will happen those turbine blades will also start rotating and let us assume that on the output shaft of that turbine we have mounted the generator shaft as a result of rotation of turbine shaft the generator shaft will also start rotating and at the end we will get the electricity 
From that easily we can say that energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. Only it can be transferred into one form to another form. Now let us start with the study of Joule's experiment. Now in Joule's experiment what we are going to see. Stirring pedals are there as well as one thermometer we have used. Then one string we have used as well as one pulley is there and here self weights are there now inside that beaker what we have stored we have stored some amount of liquid we have stored inside this beaker now let us say that we have left this weight from a height in a downward direction as a result of leaving that weight in a downward direction what will happen the stirring pedals will start rotating as a result of the mechanism we have used now as a result of rotation of those stirring pedals what will happen there will be friction between the liquid which is present inside that beaker and these stirring pedals as a result of friction between these two parts what will happen heat will be generated and with the help of thermometer what i can do i can measure how much a temperature rises there and from that rise in temperature easily i can calculate how much heat is generated inside that system now he has done lot many such experiments and what joule has concluded the summation of heat energies produced is directly proportional to summation of how much quantity of work we have done. Mathematically, how we can write? We can write summation of Q is directly proportional to summation of W. Now, in order to eliminate this proportionality sign, what I need to do? I need to use some constant of proportionality. Now in order to achieve that we are going to use one constant of proportionality that is called as Joule's constant. Therefore what I can write summation of Q is equal to J into summation of W where J is nothing but constant of proportionality which is called as a Joule's constant. For our simplification let us assume that value of Joule's constant is equal to 1. Therefore, how we can write equation number one? Equation number one will be summation of Q is equal to summation of W. Now, one special note we need to consider here. This statement is only true if a system undergoes a cyclic process. Now, what is cyclic process? Cyclic process is nothing but such a process whose initial and final states are one and the same. Now let us start with second law of thermodynamics. This second law of thermodynamics is related to heat engine, heat pump and refrigerator. Now before studying that heat engine, heat pump, refrigerator or second law of thermodynamics, we must know what is heat reservoir. Heat reservoir is nothing but what? Source of infinite amount of heat energy. This heat reservoir may be heat source or heat sink. Now, what is an heat source? Heat source is nothing but what source of energy which supplies, which supplies some amount of heat energy to a system. Then what is heat sink? Heat sink is nothing but an energy source which absorbs or receives the heat from the system. Now let us move towards the second law statements. Basically two types of or two statements are there. First one is nothing but Kelvin Planck statement. This Kelvin Planck statement is only related to heat engine. And what is the statement of that Kelvin Planck's law? It is impossible to construct a heat engine whose efficiency is 100%. Now let us study the second statement of second law of thermodynamics that is Clausius statement and the statement goes as it is impossible to construct a heat pump or a refrigerator whose sole effect is transfer of heat from low temperature reservoir towards high temperature reservoir without the help of any external agency or in simple words what we can say 
it is impossible to transfer the heat from low temperature reservoir towards high temperature reservoir without the aid of any external agency now what is third law of thermodynamics third law of thermodynamics is related to entropy of a system now what is entropy of a system entropy of a system is simply disorderness in that system now what is the statement of third law of thermodynamics third law of thermodynamics says that entropy of a system at its absolute zero temperature is constant now let us revise which part we have covered till now we have started with laws of thermodynamics which laws are there zeroth law first law second law and third law zeroth law of thermodynamics is related to the thermodynamic equilibrium then first law under that what we have studied we have studied law of conservation of energy as well as we have studied joule's experiment in a second law we have started with the definition of heat reservoir heat source and heat sink and we have studied two statements of second law which are kelvin planck statement and clausius statement and finally we have studied the third law of thermodynamics which is related to entropy of a system now you might have understood the part which how which we have covered till now if you find this information useful please do share it among your friends in order to stay connected with us please follow our page the link of that page is given in the description and finally don't forget to subscribe to our channel thank you